Blender 5.0 is right around the corner, and with it comes a lot of big changes and additions to the program. One of the more notable ones is on the array modifier. The Blender developers have been really cooking with this one. No longer do you have to add any other objects to control the array or finagle your way around to get exact measurements. Everything is now built into the modifier and very easy to use. In this video, we're going to go through the entire thing and learn everything that there is to know about the new array modifier. First, to add in this new modifier, you need to make sure you have your object selected, then head over to the modifier panel, click add modifier, generate, and you're going to see two different array options. The array legacy is for the old version. The new version is just called array. In Blender 5.0, there are three new modifiers, curve to tube, scatter on surface, and of course, this new array. Each of these are built using geometry nodes, and you can see the full setup right here. Now I'm not going to even try to attempt to explain what the heck is going on here because I have no idea. Thankfully I don't need to because everything is right there in the modifier panel. At the very top is the shape, and this is for how the array will be formed. There are four different options, and each one of these have unique properties and values that we're going to go through. Line is similar to the standard array that we're used to. Here you can set the number of objects with the count value and how they're positioned with the offset value. Relative takes the size of the original object into account when using the transform values. The offset mode gives you exact measurements for how you're offsetting the objects. And finally, endpoint allows you to set an exact endpoint of your array and then the count will distribute the objects between the start and the end. Another great feature about this new modifier is the gizmo that's created. Here you can easily click and drag to customize the array without having to put any different values in. The arrows are for the distance, and then the boxes are for the scale, and then the circle is for the rotation. The next shape method is circle, and this is probably one of the most useful features with this new system. It will automatically array the objects in a circle around the center. And again, you have the count to control the amount of objects that you use, or you can set it over to distance, which gives you the ability to distribute objects based on their specific degree increments. The other new setting that we have here is for the central axis, and this is for the rotation of the circle array. Below that is the circle segment. The two options that we have here is full, which is the full circle, or arc, which can be used to create half circles, or a, almost like a 75% of a circle, depending on what you want. And then the radius, of course, is how big the circle array is going to be. And finally, the Align Rotation tab gives you some quick control over how the objects are rotated around the center, and you can customize it exactly for what you need. Next is the Curve Shape. To demonstrate this method, I've added a curve object here, which you can assign it in the drop-down menu. For the Count method, again, you have the normal count value, which you can set right here, or you can switch it over to the Distance slider. The new setting that we have here is per curve. If your object has multiple curve lines that are not connected, then the per curve will treat each one separately, meaning if the count is set at 10, there's going to be 10 objects per curve line. If the curve is not checked, then the total amount of objects will equal to whatever you have set for the count. The last shape method is transform, and this is similar to the line shape, except that it multiplies the rotation and scale values exponentially. Meaning, if you have the scale set to 2, it will multiply the previous array by 2. So instead of adding it like the line method is. And you can see that example here. It would go from 2, 4, 8, 16, and so on, versus the other way is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and so on. If you don't want to use specific values, you can set the transformation reference to an object. So instead of using the values, you can use an object to manipulate and transform how you want. Another setting that is consistent across all of the other methods is the Realize Instances. And if you are familiar with Geometry Nodes, you're going to know exactly what this means. Currently, with it not checked, that means our objects do not have any real geometry. They are just an instance of the original object. If you try to add modifiers on top of this, it's not going to do anything. However, if you use Realize Instance, it will convert the array into actual geometry which you can then add modifiers and do different effects with it. Now that is all great, but we're not done yet. We still have the, one of the most useful features in this new modifier, and that is the randomize. Here you can randomize the position, rotation, and scale of your objects. If you want to randomize the scale on a certain axis, you can switch it to axes, or if you just want to keep it uniform, you can leave it right there. 
The flipping option, I'm guessing flips the randomized values, but I can't seem to get it to work. So maybe I'm using it wrong, but I'm not really sure. So if you know, let me know down in the comments. If you want to keep the transformations and not randomize the first object, you can set it to exclude the first or last depending on what you need. And then of course you can change the randomized seed to get different patterns. The very last setting that we have here is the merge function, and this will merge the vertices based on the distance slider. This can be useful to remove any doubles in your scene and make sure that your geometry is nice and clean. But there we go, that is all of the new features in the new array modifier in Blender 5.0. If you found this video useful, consider giving it a like and let me know in the comments down below if you would like to see videos on the other modifiers. If you're new, consider subscribing for future Blender content, but that's going to be it. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.